for the state. Welcome to the TCC uh, press conference. Um, we are holding this press conference at the background of a deepening political crisis in this country, and of course, a deepening economic crisis facing ordinary people in our country. The visible characteristics of this crisis is continued political repression and, of course, attack on the members of the democratic contingent, the closure of democratic space, subversion of the constitution and fundamental rights and freedoms of ordinary people, and, of course, the high cost of living and improvement and indifference and incompetence of the government that has got the responsibility to provide and answer this key and national question. It is therefore clear, members of the media, fellow Zimbabweans, Africans, it is clear beyond any reasonable doubt that ZANU-PF as the ruling establishment has failed and has failed absolutely to run this country, to resolve the economic crisis facing ordinary people, to show care, to show love and the necessary dignity that our people deserve as the provisions of the Constitution. So I will go into the details of uh, the press brief this week. We are focusing, as I've said, on the rising political repression. You know that uh, the regime has gone on overdrive to stifle political space and close democratic space. This strategy involves frivolous arrest of leaders of the alternative, members of parliament, journalists, members of the clergy, and other different civic groups uh, in our country. You know that Honorable Job Sikala, Honorable Godfrey Stolle, and the Nazime 16 have been in prison, in and out of the courts, and the judiciary has failed to provide its mandate to guarantee these arrested citizens their right to bail as per the provision of the constitution. Zanubev is escalating political violence. You saw that when the president, our champion in chief, traveled to uh, the countryside, his motorcade was uh, stopped and intercepted by a roadblock manned by Zanubev civilians who don't have the mandate to do so. You know that uh, just recently when we went to the Chinoy, which is the gist of our press conference this week, there is continuous and uh, continued attempts to assassinate our president, very worrying developments around repression. You know that um, on Sunday we had our rally, I think you rallied in Chinoy after winning the by-election, and what transpired is that when we went there, in fact, previously uh, we had a problem of two petrol bombs being thrown into our rally, uh, where we were supposed to be holding our events on Sunday. So in the eve of the events, as you know, as per security protocol, we manned the venue after we get a clearance from the police and uh, our members there saw a petrol bomb being thrown into Kazema Air Stadium and when the president's motorcade approached the venue of the rally an explosive was also thrown uh, in front of the motorcade endangering the life of our leadership and of course the citizens that have uh, was coming to our rally. We have also seen that uh, when we went to Kokwe were uh, uh, affected by roadblocks manned by ZANPF and terror groups uh, going after the automobiles of our leadership and uh, making it impossible for us to address a public gathering that was supposed to happen prior to the by-election. But nonetheless, we performed extremely well under very difficult uh, conditions. In the same vein, you have seen the attack on different uh, civic groups. The trade unionists have not been spared. We have seen the attack on ARTUZ leadership collective, the attack on the student leadership at the United Zimbabwe after they have decided to protest as per their constitutional right around and in and around the issue of 700% increase on uh, tuition fees. We have also seen the present violence and attack of the rights of uh, different civic groups, vendors, and members uh, of the clergy. We had a consultation meeting with uh, the church. And part of the thing that is coming out is that there's a deliberate abuse of the church to try and threaten them that when they associate with the alternative, they are going to lose uh, their stance, which the state claims were given to them by Zanupiev. So this continued abuse of the law and politics of patronage 
is a very uh, much uh, cause uh, for concern. Of course, I'll also go on to the issue of the uh, deepening socio-economic crisis. As I've said, you know that the cost of living is increasing. Ordinary people cannot afford, uh, and most of them, particularly civil servants, are earning a salary below the poverty data line. And this is also happening at the same time when the state requires these uh, uh, civil servants to show up to work despite that they are getting peanuts and the salary that cannot afford them to report to duty uh, every day. So without uh, any ambiguity, we stand clearly uh, in support of the cause by the teaching class and the working class in total in their demands for salary above uh, poverty data line. We articulate this clearly as we are going to do so in our New Zimbabwe blueprints, which articulate our program of action, how do we intend to resolve all this deepening uh, crisis. This is also happening, uh, fellow Zimbabweans, Africans, in the background of the indifference uh, that is shown by the leadership establishment of the ruling party. The country is clearly burning, and the state has shown indifference and carefree attitude towards resolving these uh, uh, problems. The plight of ordinary people is not at the center of government's program of action to uh, resolve this, but instead the regime is focused on and uh, deepening its uh, uh, internal power uh, struggles and retention programs, and of course, grand corruption that has been exposed by different investigative journalists and different members of the fourth estate. State companies continue to be fleeced by criminals directly linked to the Dapa <coughs> building and relatives of the president, which has been proven by different uh, reports and some that are going to be coming from independent institutions. In addition to that, the regime continues to market the future of our country and resources based loans with foreign countries and giving tax breaks to big uh, mining uh, corporations and conglomerates in the platinum sector, which is something that is very worrying because this is burdening ordinary citizens with highly individual taxes violating the process of Section 298 of the Constitution, which states that the burden of taxation must be shared fairly. To this end, the Citizens' Coalition is calling for the following. Number one, the return to constitutionalism, rule of law, and democratic practice. Our parliamentaries are going to be very critical in pushing this envelope, particularly to make sure that we advance the principles and values and issues that are raised by ordinary people. So parliament is going to be a very important zone of our citizen struggle to attempt to resolve some of the crises involving executive tyranny, which is basically the control of the executive contrary to the provision of the constitution, which provides for separation of powers. And the current uh, situation, we see the dominance of the executive uh, without uh, such powers provided for by the constitution. Number two, we have obviously uh, begin our engagement with Southern uh, African Development Community and the African Union we have written to these bodies and have said uh, to have meetings with them on the deepening and increased political crisis. And of course, the question of reform, which we think is at the center of Zimbabwe's vicious disputed election that have been uh, visiting this country since uh, 1980. We, of course, uh, also called to Zimbabweans and young people in particular to continuously uh, accept this call to register to vote because we believe that at the center of the Zimbabwean legitimacy problem is elections and we need participatory uh, engagement with our people in terms of uh, making sure that we resolve uh, the crisis in Zimbabwe as we end <coughs> and enter into the shadows of the next election. We also want to thank, uh, as I'm concluding, we want to thank uh, Zimbabweans who have continued to show support against difficulties. You know that we went to a by-election after the assault to the pro-democracy movement, but we continue to exist. We came in new form and character and launched a new vehicle that has uh, swiped and uh, been present across the land and breadth of our country. And we want to salute and thank Zimbabweans who have stood firm against clearly state-sponsored violence, against the brutality. We want to thank ordinary people, members of the Citizens' Coalition for Change, who have remained vigilant in the face of authoritarian consolidation 
and of course authoritarian tutelage in the democratic platform in our country. Fellow members of the media, fellow Zimbabweans, this is our press brief for this week. You know that we have begun the culture of briefing the media. That's why this week we focused on the deepening uh, political crisis. I will take uh, questions uh, if they are any. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. We were, to be, we were meant to be aware of the Troika summit that is happening and uh, we have received a favorable response, particularly the acknowledgement of our letters from these regional bodies, which we think is a positive uh, outlook for the pro-democracy movement. And we look forward to have uh, meetings with the uh, SADC and AU and other uh, uh, institutions and all the other regional and international players who okay, care, particularly in and around the issue of elections in this country being held free and fair. Because at the center of our engagement is the issue around reforms. Because we believe that once we resolve the issue around reforms, it means that there is no disputed outcome and there is no disputed leadership. Because at the center of the Zimbabwean problem, we argue and continue to submit this fact that is about legitimacy, it's about governance. We have got a disputed leadership, a leadership that governs without the mandate of 14 people. So the case of a broken down social contract is the reason why our economy is collapsing and so of course is the reason why we see corruption being the dominant language in the entire body politic of our country. So that's why we are pushing that envelope and hoping that uh, we are going to be getting favorable response uh, particularly for our neighbors because you know that our domestic problem has become a regional issue and even a domestic crisis to the South African government because we have more than 2 million Zimbabweans that have crossed as economic and political <coughs> refugees uh, to South Africa. Therefore, our partners and neighbors in the African region must have the obligation and the responsibility. Of course, we are doing what we could domestically to push the envelope of reform. That's why we are going to be launching our document um, very soon called Prepare, which is basically a document that captures seven minimum reforms that we think must be uh, articulated and we call for a conversation with different political players in this country, the media and of course the church, the students, to come so that we have a national conversation a national dialogue around reforms so that we resolve the elephant in the room, which is the issue of disputed elections. So we call for all who care about the stability of our country, all who care about good governance, all who care about the future of our country, so that we have a collective conversation around what, in our view, are the minimum reforms that must be implemented ahead of the 2023 election so that we don't have a disputed leadership. Thank you. Just a quick uh, follow-up. Okay. I, I followed uh, uh, Mr. Nelson Chamisa's uh, address in Chinori, and he actually indicated that with or without reforms, you uh, uh, still triumph in the 2020 elections. Does it mean that uh, reforms to Triple C are maybe of no value? First, uh, <coughs> I think it's not he, it's we, the people of Zimbabwe, we the ordinary people are going to emerge victorious in 2023 election and President Chamisa as the leading political figure and undisputed leader of the citizens movement will definitely usher us and lead us towards uh, our path uh, to democratic breakthrough. There is no doubt, we have no doubt in our mind that we are going to win 2023 elections. We are saying this not out of political rhetoric. If you read the Afrobarometer report, is showing that the citizens' coalition for change support is surging while the regime in Salisbury support is declining. Those are scientific signs that show that there is overwhelming consensus within the ordinary people in our country that Zimbabwe is change, that Zimbabwe is exhausted of nationalist rhetoric which has not transformed the concrete realities of ordinary people. We have won, if you follow the election uh, in, in Bulilima as an example, we won against state repression, we won against patronage 
That's why we are moving under the philosophy of winning against all odds. Because it's not an easy thing to get almost 50% in Gokwe, given the violence that happened. More than eight government ministers were there. More than 28 vehicles were barricading the roads. Violence became the order of the day. President Chamisa was not allowed his freedom of movement, freedom of assembly, and right to gather with ordinary people in Gokwe Kabuyu. That's why we thank them in particular, because they then voted for us against these difficulties. This is also happening at the background of weaponization of food. Politics of patronage has been dominant in the political landscape in our country. But our people have still, particularly in the countryside, you know that one of the words that we won in Mulilima is a word that has been controlled and dominated by Zahan since 1980. But we managed to grab that seat as the alternative. We managed to win against the difficulties. So it's a clear sign that we push the envelope of reform. We think that there must be reform, not for the selfish benefit of individuals within the rank and file of the alternative, but it's for the benefit of ordinary people. It's even for the benefit of the government itself, because the government must rule with legitimacy. That's why we call it a government for the people, by the people, for the people. And it must derive this legitimacy and this mandate to govern from the ordinary people. And they do so through the, uh, 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 the uh, election that happened every five years in our country. So reforms are important not for TPC. They are important for Zimbabwe's governance culture. You, we want to engage with the international players. We want to return Zimbabwe back to legitimacy. We do that after we have made sure that our domestic programs and processes <coughs> are done in a manner that satisfies everyone. So that when we go to bring Zimbabwe back into the international uh, 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 community, everyone is consensus. And we must, as Triple C, be able to congratulate the winner. And the loser must be able to congratulate us if we met the winner as science uh, are telling in the current uh, political environment. Thank you. <coughs> Yes. Um, during your Chinoy thank you rally, two members of the press were harassed. What do you have to say as a party in terms of journalist security and uh, concerning members of your security uh, Thank you very much. Uh, that's an important question. We stand guided by our statement that we issued. I'm sure we circulated it to the press. It, but if there's uh, some of you haven't seen it, we can uh, share it with you. But uh, the general uh, view that I can give is that Triple C, as an alternative government, values the freedoms of journalists. You know that we have been in the forefront of calling any flagrant violation of the rights of journalists and the media to do their work. We are totally in support of the media. We are having engagement with uh, different media uh, players to try and make sure that we find a solution on how do we, in particular, as Triple C, in most of our events, so that we make sure that the media is protected because we bear the political responsibility to make sure that there is an understanding and we agree on the protocols, we agree on the process we must do uh, to make sure that journalists are protected uh, in our program so that, because remember when we go into rallies, our rally is not just manned by the security but also there are youth and leaders that got the responsibility to make sure that uh, they provide security to our venue and these local young people must, might not be aware of different members of the media. So we must have a clear engagement with the media so that we strengthen this kind of relationship, we strengthen how we secure uh, the right of journalists to cover our rally. We have no problem. We have even provided a platform for the media that cast against us because we believe that is their constitutional right. We believe that is part of their work. And we've got the political and ethical responsibility to make sure that they do their work without uh, any hindrance. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Ah, thank you, Oscar. You speak about winning elections in 2023, but as a political scientist, you are not touching on the transfer of power. Can you speak here? Okay. So uh, thank, you thank you very Which much. Uh, I went to school with Drew, so, <laughs> so she wants to bring my other identity. <laughs> uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of uh, the Citizens Coalition for Change, but nonetheless, part of our seven minimum uh, reforms include uh, the last reform that we talk about is power transfer. We believe that that reform must be in the constitution. Like any other jurisdiction in the African continent and the world, there must be a clear stipulated provision in the constitution that defines the role of the winner, the role of the winner, and the role of the loser. Because we think that if it's in the constitution, 
there is no ambiguity, there must be clarity around transfer of power and that's a critical reform that we are going to be pushing as the citizens coalition for change so that there is clarity in terms of what, does what, what is the role of the judiciary, at what stage shall, shall the swearing in happen and all the other process that happen after the transfer of power. So we are very, very critical about that. We think that it must be a critical minimum reform that we think must be resolved and be put here in the supreme law of the land so that there is no ambiguity. Thank you. Yes. Uh, today marks exactly three months since Ghana was arrested. What are you going to do as a party? Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think that you have seen the work that we have done for uh, not just Honorable Scala and Honorable Godfrey's toilet, but also for the Nyatime 16. We have appealed to all who can to be able to come together so that we resolve this issue because these champions have become victims of a captured judiciary. We believe that the judiciary must be able not to be a cheerleader on cases of abuse of the law, but they must be able to guarantee the rights of ordinary people, irregardless of where they belong. The law must not be weaponized against political opponents. We read about it in the history of our country. We read about it in the history of oppressive regimes across the world. And we don't think that Zimbabwe, as a constitutional democracy, must be able to continue in that particular path. We are going, obviously, or to answer succinctly on that. We have begun an engagement, I'm sure you are going to be reading in the newspapers an engagement with members of the civil society, members of the church, students and different uh, sections of society around the collective way forward that Zimbabwe must take, particularly in the light of deepening political crisis which manifests itself through closure of democratic space, weaponization of the law and of course weaponization of bail itself as a weapon against uh, members of the opposition. You know what, Gajena, who stole funds and is visible, is investigated by state agencies, but what Gajena is working is quite free. We read in the newspaper that is also uh, requesting his passport so that he can continue with his uh, visits across the world. It's clear that the law is now, in fact, what we see is that there is a law for the uh, for ZANU-PF and the law for the rest of us. It's an animal farm kingdom, and that must be resolved. And that takes every Zimbabwean to collectively come together so that we resolve this. I have been in prison myself. You have seen members in the rank and file of the alternative coming in and out of the courts. You have seen state prosecutors running hook, line and sinker to try and make sure that they thought you know, we have seen what happened to Honorable Joanna Momombe, Cecilia Chimiri and others. There is a clear deliberate agenda and attempt to try and scare us, dismember us and make sure that we demobilize from participating in this democratic struggle. Against all odds, the leadership collective of the Citizens Coalition for Change will remain vigilant and committed to this struggle. And I, let me say here and now, there is no struggle without bruises, there is no struggle without pain. We committed ourselves knowing fully well the cost of fighting a vicious authoritarian dictatorship. But we do so with commitment and vigilance, knowing that history will record that when the repressive apparatus of the state turned against us, we never wavered, we never did that. So we continue to fight. And we know very well that our comrades are going to rejoin with their families while doing everything necessary to make sure that they get their freedom. Thank you. Okay, a follow-up to that one. Uh, I want to know what happens to more blessing and its remains. Because the family said uh, no bail until the job seller has been released. So where is the point? What, what, who is uh, in care of the service? Yeah, that is the tragedy of the crisis in Yatime because more blessing early uh, when uh, she was murdered, Honorable Jobs Carl was appointed by the family to become the official lawyer and the spokesperson of the family. And they had been handling uh, these cases and we hope that uh, um, you know the family might be able to find a way so that they communicate to the world. But we know, as you know, that uh, the family had said we are not going to go ahead with the burial uh, until Honorable Jobs Carl who is the family lawyer is released uh, from prison. We have not yet any further uh, a shift from the family, uh, and you know that more place in Ali was our champion, and uh, the family has its own culture of views uh, that we stick to, and we don't want to intervene around that. What we know is that more blessing Ali may have so rest in power is a victim of the state that has turned against his own children, which is a worrying trend. That's why we're making engagement with different regional international bodies so that we resolve this. We don't believe 
uh, the next government of this country that anyone must lose their life on account of politics. People must be allowed to differ and differ with us uh, politically without them being victims of uh, state organs being uh, unleashed uh, to them. Thank you. Okay, I think I'll take the last two questions. Okay, uh, there have been suggestions of a uh, political dialogue instead of pursuing the uh, political, instead of uh, pursuing the court process with regards to the cement and jobs can I end, uh, story. Uh, what is your position on that? Okay, you have another question? Yes, I wanted to ask you, uh, you seem so determined to, to participate in the next year's elections. Are you not worried about the circuit of the members uh, would be escalating violence in the country? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, we, we have said we don't uh, believe that uh, we must interfere um, with the courts as a matter of principle because the court and the judiciary in particular bear the responsibility to guarantee the right and freedom of ordinary people. Those who suggest that uh, we must go and kneel down and pray some political elites, uh, are, they've got their own reasons and I think you can engage them on their views on that. Our position is very clear. We believe that there must be sanity within the judiciary so that we guarantee the freedom of our people and we are going to use whatever is necessary within our powers to make sure that we guarantee the freedom uh, of our champions. We don't get to surrender our struggle on account of uh, certain difficulties that face us because we must focus on the central strategic objective of the National Democratic uh, Revolution. Thank you. The question around um, participating in election. Look, we have defined our method of struggle as an uh, uh, electrocentric approach. Um, but we have to provide a buffer against rising political tensions. That's why we have uh, started the engagement, because part of our key discussions with different partners is going to be around community protection. We think that we must take a step to make sure that we protect our people, to make sure that we uh, uh, fork out violent uh, uh, elements and make sure that we surrender them to the law enforcement agencies and protect our people. Because we're not going to continue crime foul going forward. We have to protect ourselves and find methods within the law to make sure that uh, our people are not vulnerable to state-sponsored uh, uh, repression and violence. Uh, thank you very much, members of the fourth estate. Fellows Zimbabweans, uh, this is the end uh, of our press brief. Thank you. Okay.